G'day hooligans, today we're going to be talking about whether or not you should get a master's or a PhD in engineering. Now I'm sure that the question you want answered immediately is, well should I? And it's a complicated answer, I will tell you that. Hopefully after watching this video you can get a sense for whether or not you think engineering grad school might be for you. The main questions that I'm going to be covering today are up on the screen. Now if I don't cover one of your burning questions, feel free to leave me a comment down below and hey, while you're there, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So in this whole video, I'm going to essentially be dissecting a conversation that my class had with one of our professors about engineering masters and PhDs. Without further ado, let's go. So the first question you might ask yourself is, what is the best way to get into a master's or a PhD program? From this conversation we had with the professor, he effectively said the best way to get into a master's or a PhD program is to already know your supervisor. They get thousands of applications per year if you're applying to a desirable school, which means that you're going to be in so much competition with so many other people and you have to really try and find a good way to differentiate yourself. If somebody has an application, from someone they already know and an application for somebody they have never met before and they are relatively equal, they are almost always going to go with the person that they already know. They would much rather have a somewhat surefire thing than taking a gamble on a person they've never met before. This same idea applies to jobs. If you're trying to get a job, it's very good to network before you apply so that you already know the person who is going to be reading over your resume. That gives you such a leg up on the competition, it's super, super understated, but it's super, super important. Now another topic came up during our discussion, and that was, do you need prior research experience specifically for engineering, masters, and PhDs? The answer is, it depends. Depending on your supervisor, they might care more or less if you have research, but generally speaking, in engineering, there is no expectation that you have any prior research experience. Many programs do co-ops, engineering students go on internship, so they don't really have time to do research projects but they might still want to pursue a master's or a PhD, so the requirement is usually dropped if you have some other stuff on your resume. Now for this prof specifically, he even said when we asked, hey, if you had someone with research experience and someone without research experience, would you choose a person with the experience? And he basically said it doesn't matter. And like, no, he, he wouldn't choose one over the other based on research experience. Depending on your supervisor, it genuinely may or may not matter. And this is very specific to engineering, let me tell you, because in many other, especially thesis-based master's programs, there is almost no way in hell that you are getting in if you do not have research experience in your undergrad. But because engineering is a professional program and more practical, the expectation isn't there. Now, building off of this, let's talk about the difference between a course-based master's and a thesis-based master's. A thesis-based master's is basically, you're gonna be doing lots and lots of research, baby, let's go. <laughs> this is the one where you have to find a supervisor and the supervisor will help you get funding. And these types of master's programs tend to be less expensive for the student since it's partially funded by the supervisor. A course-based master's, on the other hand, is generally self-funded, and as the name implies, you are going to be doing many more courses, for example, like you might have learned in your undergrad, and a lot less thesis-based work. You probably will have more projects incorporated in your master's courses, but you won't be focusing on one big research project throughout the two or three years that it takes you to get your master's. So these two types of entrances into a master's program can be suited for different types of people. Maybe you prefer exploration and you want things to be almost 100% self-guided, I say self-guided, you're getting assistance from the supervisor, versus somebody who wants something more structured. But that being said, a course-based master's is actually a pretty useful little hack if you're an international student. Let's get into a little more cost discussion here. Uh, let's say that you got your undergrad in a different country, master's and PhD in Canada. One way that you could get in without having previously known a supervisor is to do a course-based master's. You'll still get a master's degree, it'll look the same on paper. And then while you're in your master's program, you can learn and find a supervisor and then do a PhD. Some people will choose to do this. It is a little bit more expensive of a way to do it, and you will probably end up in lots and lots of student debt because it is expensive out here for international students, especially in master's programs. So I don't really recommend this route, uh, but if you have to do it, it's an option, you know? Think about it. Another very important thing that I learned from this discussion with the supervisor is that 
as an international student, it actually becomes twice as hard to get into a master's program if you're coming from a different country into Canada. That's because international students' funding costs twice as much to fund on the supervisor's end as a domestic student. And that's purely because the government of Ontario or Canada helps fund particular research-based programs for Canadian students. So a supervisor effectively has the choice of hiring two Canadian students or one international student. So you have to be a very exceptional international student to get into a thesis-based master's. I just thought that was kind of interesting. So now that we've talked about some of the basics of how the programs look, what are the entrance requirements? Well, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need two letters of reference, and you're going to need a research intention letter if you're doing the thesis. The supervisor that I spoke to basically just said these reference letters are just to make sure that there are no red flags. For him, it was just a checkbox to check something off of the list to make sure that you're a generally a decent student. Now the letter of intent is basically just to check that you have some writing skills. I'm sure the bar is a bit lower for engineering than it would be for an English literature master's, uh, but you know, it's still there. You still got to know how to write. Okay, so let's say that you've gotten into your program of choice. Now, what is the difference between say a master's thesis and a PhD thesis? In an engineering master's thesis, you are effectively summarizing some existing knowledge on a topic that's already out there and trying to draw some conclusions from that information. Meanwhile, in a PhD, you might be trying to prove and argue that a specific way of doing things in the engineering sense is better than another. For other PhDs, you actually have to discover something brand new. The reason that engineering does it this way is because it's a little bit difficult to discover something new when engineering is such an application focused subject. They want to see like, okay, these things in the world already exist. If you can discover something new, even better, but you know, we're not math or physics, but these three different ways of doing something in the world exist. Prove to me conclusively with solid evidence, which one of these three is better. That is effectively what you're going to be doing in a PhD thesis if you choose to go that far. Now, this is actually a question that came up on my YouTube channel as well as in my discussions with the professor, and that is, can you do a master's in a field that is different from your undergrad? The short answer is yes. If you're interested in a topic and you have enough related skills to compile the research, run your own tests, you can do a master's or a PhD in any field of engineering. Sometimes you can even transition into a harder science like physics, biochem. Uh, I do know a guy who did that mushroom uh, cellulose fungi stuff, and he ended up in biology in his master's. Uh, shout out Viraj if you're out there. <laughs> Smart guy. Uh, he ended up in a basically biology focused master's. So it really just depends what department suits the thing that you're interested in researching. The most important thing is that you have a supervisor. Pretty much anything can be figured out if you have the supervisor. Another common question is, can my master's and PhD be different? And again, the answer is yes. Um, generally, you want it to be in something that is somewhat related to your master's thesis. But, you know, if you come across a completely new topic and you decide that you want to do your PhD on it, it might take you a bit longer, but you might want to do that instead. So it's up to you, really. Now, you'll often hear from final year students, should I do my master's right after I graduate or can I work for a little bit and then come back? The general consensus is that it is better to do your master's immediately after graduation while you have the momentum. But if you are only doing it because you have momentum and not because you're interested in any of the stuff of research or any of the topics, just don't do it. You have to have a good reason to be doing it. So, you know, if you're the type of person like me who would rather just go work immediately after undergrad, that's probably what you should do. Everyone's situation is different, but this is just general advice, not for anyone specific. Work a little bit, and if you start to get bored with your work or you come across some topic that you're extremely interested in, then you do still have opportunities to go and do a master's later in life. If you have enough motivation, you can do it. You have less baggage, you got no family, no kids, no wife, probably, um, in your final year of undergrad, so it's a lot easier to just jump into another program and not a big problem. So that about wraps up everything that I had to talk about in this video. If you have any other questions related to engineering master's thesis that I did not get to, leave a comment. I will try and answer as many of those comments as I possibly can. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Hooligan. Cool